I was born to be someone else, someone that is, whose life is defined principally by race, segregation, and poverty. Is this sort of a, a reckoning of self to see that little girl and now see where you've come? I do sometimes pause. How is it possible for me to have risen to the top of my profession? When, as a child, I thought I couldn't have a profession. I grew up in the pre-civil rights era where to be black was one of the worst things you could be. You had no rights. You had no capacity to aspire to anything. So that was, that was my beginning. Ruth Simmons grew up as the 12th child of sharecroppers in East Texas at a crossroads in history in the racially segregated South. Take me back to living in Texas in the late 40s and 50s, and what was your life like? The postscript to slavery was sharecropping. Mm -hmm. And so my parents were sharecroppers, field hands, basically. Child labor was a part of that system. And so all of my siblings would go to the field along with my mother and father to pick cotton. No running water. Oh, no, no. No electricity not. to read. Well, no, 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 no. In spite of that, I was the happiest child because I was surrounded by all these siblings and my parents. I was surrounded by love. You say that it's the people that loved you and saw something in yes. you as a little girl, as an adolescent, that made you see something in yourself. Of course. Most of all, I should say, it was the teachers convinced that times would change. Mm -hmm and that there would be a time when I could soar. I couldn't believe that myself. They believed it for me. Do you remember that feeling of, of being seen by your teachers, what, what that meant to you? Walking into that classroom and seeing it stocked with books and pencil and paper, here was a place that was prepared for the kind of work that I could do with my mind. Mind work must be very important. Mm. And that convinced me that that's something I wanted to be with forever. In her new memoir, Up Home, Simmons describes her journey from growing up in poverty in Great Plan, Texas, to making history in 2001 as the first black president of an Ivy League university when she was at Brown. Today, she's one of the country's preeminent educators, inspiring generations of students. I ask you to add your voice to the cause of justice wherever you go. What does it mean to you to be the first black president of an Ivy League school? To become president of an elite university was to say, yes, well, we've destroyed that notion that black people can't think. It felt as if I might have been opening the door for other people. To be a first, you always feel that you're risking everything for the people you represent. And you're terrified that you won't do well enough to welcome them into the fold. First generation college students, how did you as the president look into their eyes and say, like, I see you, I've been there. The students would line up for hugs. Mm -hmm. I embraced them in every way that I could. You deserve to be here. It is often that I think back and I catch my breath for a bit because it's such a long distance to have traveled. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Oh, my God. I love oh. her. And okay, wow. she was also the president at Smith College. She returned home. Mm -hmm. She retired, and then she returned home and worked Where at Prairie View wow. mm -hmm. A&M in Texas, which she said was a beautiful full circle mm -hmm. moment because it's a historically black yeah, college. Sure. Mm -hmm. Ruth's memoir, which is spectacular, it's out <laughs> next month. Y'all pre-order it. If you want to <laughs> read a book about hope and love, all the goodness we yeah. need, Please get it. And we want to thank Rose Vale Kitchen at the Civilian Hotel for hosting us. I think the us. optimism no, piece right. of it is so apparent. Yeah. Oh, I, I, she's optimistic about everything. I talked to her about affirmative action, and she said, I've lived a long time. I've seen really hard things. We're going to, you know, we're going to come back. It's oh, going to be okay. Wow. I'm just so happy she wrote that book. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, Jenna, thank well you. Done. Thank you, JBH. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.